Ah, uh, it's time to kill this ridiculously powerful elder dragon. It's me, Nami L. Oh, ah, oh, you're beautiful. It, fuck it, I'm abandoning this quest. Oh, okay then. It's me, Tempered Nami L. I too am going to leave, actually. Oh. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, today marks the arrival of a new era. An age of wonder, a possibility of Master Rank Arch-Tempered Monsters, as the unveiling of Arch-Tempered Nemiel is finally here. To some people, she is easy as pie, but to others, she is hard as pie that has been left out a little bit too long. So I thought, why not give you all a guide on Arch-Tempered Nemiel, lining up her changes, a couple little tips and tricks, and then my thoughts on the future of the Arch-Tempered system in Iceborne. Starting off with changes, then, Let's deal with the elephant in the room. No, Arch Tempered Nemiel does not have any properly unique, completely new moves. However, that said, she has some neat little tricks, some changes, and some augmentations of her existing moves that change things up a nice amount. Starting off with large, overarching changes then, the first and arguably most notable change is her fight location. As opposed to normal, she will now start in Area 4, then go to Area 5, then Area 10, the point being that her path is just totally different, much like Arch Tempered Val Hazak. What this does does is take a monster that you may be comfortable fighting and stick them in an entirely different environment in order to make you feel uncomfortable with the situation. What makes me feel uncomfortable with the situation, however, is the crazy amount of electricity. <laughs> as Arch Tamper Namiel has no requirement to charge up, meaning that she can become electrified whenever she wants, and in fact, she starts the fight completely charged up too. What this means is she can combo Thunder into her water attacks right from the very beginning of the very first zone, and honestly, it means you need to be pretty terrified of her super move now too. It can come a lot sooner, and it is much less predictable. This same principle applies to her water armor too. She starts with it already on, and she gets it back moments after her super attack now. Namiel also sleeps in an unusual area now as Zone 8 is her new nest. And this is very cool for a couple of reasons. First up, this is a very good fighting zone. It's just fun, it's open, and it's very fair to both parties. To both parties, because reason number two is that she does not sleep within range of any walls, so you cannot wake her up with a flint shot. Honestly, it is totally worth not having to fight in that tiny upper coral zone. That place can suck a hey! On top of that, there is the classic Arch Tempered. Here's a bunch of extra damage just because it's painful. And then when charged up, which is simply the majority of the fight for Arch Tempered Namiel, her cloak, which is her entire back wing panel thing, is immune to ranged ammo, like completely. I am so sorry to you, Pierce enthusiasts, but today is simply not your day. The guard requirements for her beams have also gone up as she can now blast right through a non-boosted block. That just about covers all the overarching changes though, but the individual moves can still affect the fight a fair bit. So let's begin with the smaller one. You know the beam she fires where she sort of lingers on one side for a while? Well, normally this always comes from her left side, sticks to her left side, and ends directly in the middle. It is an incredibly predictable and dodgeable pattern. Now, well, Namiel goes both ways. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the beam now has a right side variation where it follows the exact same pattern except mirrored. What is particularly odd about this is that this attack seems really, really rare, at least compared to the normal one. Like to the point that I saw it once for every 10 or so times that I saw the normal one, maybe even less than that, honestly. I really love this concept of keeping the hunter on their toes, making them adjust on the fly. But if you make this attack a comparative rarity, then it becomes sort of pointless, no? Don't get me wrong, in its current state, this attack serves to catch you off guard once in a blue moon when it does happen, it does create a moment in the fight. But if it was consistent, like a 50-50 chance of which side it came from, it could mess with the general idea of the entire fight. It would change which parts of her are consistently safe to stand. All of that would change. Suffice it to say, on this one, I love the idea, but I think the execution could have used a little bit of tweaking. As for the biggest of move changes, it has to be her super move. Here she comes to wreck the day! And it's actually a really good change in my mind. When she does this move, the initial shooting water all over the floor covers a lot more ground. Like, she literally produces a larger puddle. And then the explosion of the supernova itself has a larger radius too. This thing was already pretty dang scary, but now it is absolutely lethal. It will one-shot you if you get hit by it, unless you are running some sort of anti-element immortal build, so you have to dodge well to avoid it. As well, on very rare occasion, she can do her super move and then just stay 
stay in the zone, still attacking you without water armor or electricity aura, which is just totally different from how she's acted in the past. Past this, I have seen some people say things like, her super move itself is faster before she hits the ground, her jellyfish move frequency is higher, she pulls you through the water more often, and all that manner of stuff. As far as my research goes, I have found that none of these things are true, and I definitely don't consider them likely to be the case, but given the difficult nature of measuring some of these, let's just label it as inconclusive evidence to prove that those changes exist in the first place. As far as tips for actually fighting her, keep in mind that you want high thunder and water resistance, as her attacks and damage can be very back and forth between the two. My main recommendation is to just eat for general elemental resistance, it'll give you a bunch of both. It is a massive bonus, and especially on this quest, it could be the difference between life and death multiple times. If that isn't enough, then element resistance skills can be used as well. On this subject, we as hunters also have thunderproof and waterproof mantles, however, I struggle to agree with their validity in this quest as she sort of goes back and forth between water and thunder far too frequently to put on just one of those mantles and feel safe. As far as her own elemental weaknesses, it's all about fire. She's weak as hell to fire, and when she is charged up, she is weaker to elements, which with Arch Temper Damiel is just the entire fight. So, elemental builds eat your heart out. What an odd thing to say. When it comes to fighting her in the weird new zones, keep in mind that you actually can relocate an enraged monster in Iceborne by dragging them wherever you want, and if you are really struggling, you can totally use this to make it a bit easier. And finally, her second fight zone in Area 5 with the giant pink tree, this zone has two sleep toads, and in order to make her sleep, you will actually have to use both of these sleep toads. Doing so, however, is in fact free damage, so give it a go when you're in that zone, because you have to go there, it's part of the fight. As for the equipment, the Namiel Gamma Armor set is just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the fact that the default coloring is really just this nice shade of pink, and then just the seriously beautiful detailing on the back of it, this thing just makes me very happy. I mean, as far as the skills go, it's not necessarily the greatest damaging set in the world, but it is such an amazing utility set, guys. Like, seriously, if you can find a way to get the value out of all the different stamina skills together, then this set will fit perfectly with that. As it stands, I can see people trying to incorporate just like a single piece of this into their sets, just to get something like the full three ranks of Stamina Surge and a rank of Tool Specialist from one armor piece alone. Like, budget-wise, this stuff is awesome, as long as you actually want the utility in your set. And that just about covers the fight itself, ladies and gentlemen, but how do I actually feel about the experience as a whole, especially in relation to future Arch-Tempered Monsters? Well, I quite like it, honestly. This feels like a weird midpoint of the high rank Arch-Tempered Monsters. There are undeniable changes, there are things that are totally different, but in ways that have sort of a tiny effect on the fight. Like, none of these things, the way they are currently implemented, are quite as impactful to me as Teostra's face cuddle, or any of the million things that Arch Tempered Zenojiva pulled out of his bag of tricks. That said, the fight is different, it feels different, it is more intense, and it is a breath of fresh air. Air. As far as I'm concerned, this here is about the standard for what I want an Arch-Tempered Monster to be. Anything less than this is something I would consider a bit of a disappointment, and anything more than this would probably wow me. So I find myself struggling to be upset about this at all. No. In my opinion, Namiel is the exact definition of a pretty good Arch-Tempered Monster. Alright everyone, I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been everything you need to know about Arch-Tempered Namiel. Did you enjoy this fight? What else do you wish had been done to change it? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. This is the brand new outro to tell you all the things that you do that we love, so let's start with something simple and say, oh, we love your eyes. When they're watching us play video games, we make a bunch of jokes that are kinda lame. And when they gaze upon our failures as we try to kill the monsters or important, important news about the kingdom and Amelia, Rage, Cotton, and Hollow are all here talking about the things you want to hear. So if you want to be the first to hear, like and subscribe and the bell and we'll cheer. Some of you are patrons even though we are all the noobs and you're the pros. There's nothing we can do to thank you. No, really, there's nothing we could possibly do. Goodbye.